Hello, and welcome back to Aubrey Books and Coffee. Please grab your favorite beverage of choice and join me. Oh my gosh, it's August, you guys. We are this close to getting to the cooler weather. I don't know about you, I prefer the fall, like, by a lot. So I am like, bring it on. And August also means that we get to go back to school. So whether you're getting a uh, higher education degree, or if you're kicking the little ones out to go to school like I am, it means maybe a little more peace and quiet at home, maybe a little more time to yourself all the good things. And so along with all of that, of course, it also gives us books to read, right? So I know you're here to see the game. Let's get started. All right. How many different prompts are we going to have here in August? I wonder. Ooh, seven. That's not so bad. Okay. So I'll roll my dice, and the first prompt is a cookie, and it looks like it's a black and white cover. Okay, so we got that first prompt of a black and white cover. Before I show you my book pick and talk about it a little bit, I wanted to let you know my theme for the month is academia or dark academia, something to do with books and studying and school. And that's where I'm kind of leaning towards with all of these prompts, especially since I'm going to be joining the Aurelium Academy at Book Roast Channel. You've got to go check it out for her magical readathon. So for the black and white cover, I chose the Book Eaters by Sun, Sun Yi, I believe it is, Dean. And all I know about this is it follows a secret line of people who actually eat books instead of food. It's it, That is their nourishment. And what you eat, the book type and genre and story in there is what it fills you with, whether it's darkness or fantasies and light. And so I'm excited to kind of see what goes on with that? Because what could possibly go wrong, right? Okay, roll number two. So far, so good. <gasps> is a book. And the prompt is a book that intimidates you. So the second prompt is a book that kind of intimidates me, and that would actually be a sequel. And that is The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. This one kind of intimidates me because in the first one, we followed six magicians that desperately wanted to be a part of this secret society. I don't want to give anything away. You know, I'm spoiler free here. Um, but things happened. Am I right? And so I still haven't read the sequel. I'm intrigued. I want to. I'm also scared. I, I don't know where they're going to go with it. And so it's been kind of intimidating. And that's why I've not picked it up. Now I have no excuse, literally got a prompt for it. And so that's my pick to see what happens next. Rule number three. Oh, another book. Wow, that's fitting. And it says one that's kind of unheard of. So the third prompt is unheard of, and I knew this existed because it's been sitting on my bookshelf for a very long time, but nobody was really talking about it. I got it in a bookish box. I want to get it off my shelf and into your hands in case you like it, and it's not a five-star read. So for this prompt, I chose Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. All I know about this is that there's a curse on a realm. I believe it's called Azenor, if I pronounce that right. Well, basically, um, the each realm has their own town, and each town has their own warden who can help protect them from this curse that causes nightmares to essentially run over the town and kill people. Well, Clementine wants to be the warden of her small town. Unfortunately, she ends up butting heads with some people who have been going through a century old war and uh, conflict. And so she gets sucked into it. And so she has to really work hard to learn her magic, learn what she can do to overcome them, overcome these nightmares and this curse. And it just involves a lot of studying and work. And so thereby, academia kind of. 
Roll number four is a peppermint. Excellent. Like those peppermints. A random number grab from my list. So prompt number four was so easy. It's a random number generator that I grab, which is a part of my regular checklist anyway. I love it because I always, when I finish one book and I know that there's more in the series, I will put the next one on there just so I don't forget to continue these series and finish them. And the number generator happened to land on it. So I am excited to add, and it also fits in my academia, The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is now book two of her um, Folk of the Air series. And basically, we're going to continue following Jude, who goes to that school with the other evil fae. And I don't want to give too much away because there was quite a bit of things that happened at the end of the first one. And I know she's going to have to continue working with that and protecting somebody. I don't want to give anything away. But I'm excited just to see where it goes. And again, she's at a school, so it fits. Roll number five, almost there, is a roll again. I think I will. Oh, coffee. I'm going to go with coffee on that one. Oh, look at that. First, we have a standalone fantasy prompt, and we got a coffee break. And our coffee break will come from here. And of course, you see Stevie in the background there. <laughs> This is hard to do one-handed, but I will do my best. And let's hope we get some caffeine, because then it's good news. <laughs> oh, look, it says, as I keep dropping it, I just want to prolong my time with you guys, that's why. Caffeine, swap a prompt for one of my choice. Ooh. So prompt number five was a standalone fantasy, and oh my gosh, I, uh, I may be stretching the word fantasy with this one, but I want to do it because it's one I've been wanting to read for a while, and I would like to think in my own naive, innocent way that this is fantasy and doesn't happen in the real world. Don't burst my bubble. I chose The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. And I know that it follows Shay, who's at college. Again, remember, I'm trying to do the academia <laughs> for everything. And basically, she's at college, and she gets seduced by a man that she meets there. And he actually ends up seducing her best friends, too, to get them to join a cult. Well, she finally escapes, and she's living her best life after that somewhere far, far away from this cult, but gets sucked back in when one of her friends dies. So... It seems like it's going to be an incredible read. I want to read it. I choose to believe this never happens. Just let me be happy. Roll number six. Oh, on the edge there. Gives us a roll again. Well, this time I'll pick a cookie. We never had a cookie. Ooh, published this year. Prompt number six is a book published this year, which I like because, of course, book boxes and book of the month, here's a hint, um, always do books that are published, of course, this year. So it fulfills this prompt. It's also academic because it has to do with writing and reading. So I choose to believe it fits the prompt. And I chose The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. A lot of people have been talking about this. Um, it was one of my book of the month picks. I want to read this so bad. I begged my book club to choose it. And they did not. So I'm going to read it on my own. And it's relatively thin. So it'll be a nice addition to the shelf up there. Because um, I, you know, the smaller page count, the better. Uh, last month, I had to average over 315 pages a day in order to make sure I finished on time. So I'm hoping this month it'll be less than that if possible. But anyway, in the wishing game, we follow Lucy, who is a teacher's aide, see, also academic. Um, and basically, there was, um, she had a really rough childhood and found solace in books. Well, she's grown up now, and she hears about this contest that is being put on by this really reclusive, mega best selling author who just disappeared under mysterious circumstances and then suddenly reappears and is offering this writing challenge, and that the winner will have their lives changed. And so, of course, Lucy's hoping that that'll be for her. So I'm excited to get in there and see what all the hype is about. 
And our last roll oh, is the cookie that I said we never get. And it says a beautiful cover. And our final prompt is for a beautiful cover. And this is another one of those prompts I love because there's so many beautiful books out there. But I chose this one in particular because it has to do with academia again. Like I said, with my theme, I chose The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead. Now this gorgeous book I ended up buying off of Pango Books from Kim from Whimsical Narratives and I just love it. I think it's so pretty. Um, but basically we're gonna be following Adelaide who wants to, who's a countess and wants to get out of an arranged marriage. So she disguises herself as a servant and joins The Glittering court which is the name of a school whose sole purpose is to get these impoverished young girls and help to train them to become upper class ladies and everything seems to be going okay until she meets a boy who seems to have a secret of his own starts to uncover her secret and then the school itself has some secrets so I'm all about that Now it's time to do our apothecary jar pick. Now we're going to pick from the apothecary jar and see what it gives us. There's always so many in here. And they've been in there for a while. All right, I got one. Let's see, what does it say? It says, Felix Ever After by Kareen I believe that's Challenger. Well, that was so nice of the apothecary jar. It didn't even realize that we had an ongoing theme and yet the pick fits. So for the apothecary jar pick, I'll be reading Felix Ever After by Kisin Callender. I apologize, you know I'm not the best at <laughs> the names, but this will follow a teenager, Felix, who decides that he's going to catfish a rival classmate and uh, hopefully get some revenge. But Felix starts to fall in love. Oh, I have a feeling this will be a nice, easy, fun read, and I'm just excited to see how this goes down. And now the gift that keeps giving all year long to myself, I'm gonna pick two out of the advent jar. Now I get to do my two advent picks, which I absolutely love, because then the ones that I keep telling you I'm most looking forward to coming out each month, I end up making sure I read those. If not that year, then the next year. And so the two I'm going to be reading are oh James Patterson by James Patterson <laughs> good I've been wanting to read his uh, biography for a while and then this one says upgrade by Blake Crouch so we're starting to get to the end of that advent jar I'm gonna have to think of what to do when it runs out any ideas guys <laughs> But meanwhile, the two that I chose for uh, this month, actually, I'm kind of excited about. The first one is, of course, James Patterson by James Patterson. I'm excited to finally get to read more about this incredible author who seems to, I don't know, magically come up with books. I mean, he, he prints what, like 20 a year? It's insane. I can't wait to read all about him. He's an author I have admired for a long time, and I love his Alex Cross series so much. The second one that we're going to be able to read this month is Upgrade by Blake Crouch. And this follows Logan Ramsey, I'll come back to that part, who's finally going to get the brain he's always wanted to have. Unfortunately, while things seem to be going well, of course, there's got to be something, right? Well, he gets uh, unfortunately infected by a virus and it starts to change him and it starts to turn him into something unknown and unexpected. Hmm. So I'm excited about that. The funny thing is I actually have a godson named Logan Ramsey. And so I just absolutely love that. What are the odds the first and last name would be a character in this book? I can't wait to tell Amy about it. Let's do the bookopoly roll. 
Next we have our Bookopoly rule, which is exciting. Last time we landed on a Leia Bardugo space. This is all we have left, guys, until we get to home or go, which is this one right here for the library picture. And remember, once we pass that, I get to get a bookish item of my choice, and whoever says, I saw it, and can name one book off of my TBR for that month, first gets to have that item with me, whether it's a bookmark or a hoodie or a beautiful saucer and cup, whatever the case may be, they get to join me in the bookish item and I'll mail it to them. Just they have to say, hey, I saw you passed go and name one of the books on my TBR. So here we go. Couldn't happen today because even with double sixes, I'm still gonna be one shy, but I'm getting super close. I'm betting next month for sure. And it looks like we have a 10. So yeah, next month for sure. Pay attention. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And so this picture in particular, if I can zoom in, looks like, oh, I'm having a hard time making that out on the camera. And it looks like, I'm going to have to look at my list because <laughs> I can't make that out, but I'll let you know in a minute. I'm sorry for the confusion. That little image did not print as well as I would have hoped. And this is the first time that I'm obviously going around the board. That little book on there was Pride and Prejudice. So it's supposed to remind me that I want to read a Jane Austen novel or at least something from the Regency era. And so I chose My Lady's Choosing. This one is the one I was telling you about in those Friday morning sprints, shameless plug, 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, that basically I heard about on a podcast that it's like the choose your own adventures that, you know, you had growing up, or at least I did and absolutely love, but they were almost always some kind of murder mystery or sci-fi. This one's a romance. I am so excited. And apparently it's not just a regular Mr. Darcy kind of romance, although you can choose that. There's also werewolves and vampires and all kinds of crazy stuff thrown in there. So I will let you guys know at the end of the month how this went, but I am so excited for this one. So the number generator landed on 56, and I am excited to say that that's gonna allow me to read finally After Worlds by Scott Westerfeld. And as far as I understand, this follows two different ladies. The first one is a teen named Darcy, who's finally getting her first novel published. She's so excited. So she's kind of toying with the idea of maybe skipping college just so she can go to New York City and get this published. Meanwhile, we also follow Lizzie, who is trying really hard to survive a terrorist attack. And by the way, she can talk to ghosts. And each month I'm trying to read a Star Wars novel, so I'm going to continue, as you can see with the timeline up there, with Star Wars Darth Bane Path of Destruction by Drew, oh wow, Carpishan? <laughs> I've read another one of, of Drew's, but uh, still not going to get the name right. Basically, this is the first of the Darth Bane novels, and I've heard really good things about them, so I'm excited to finally get excited again reading these books. Um, but basically, it, the Sith are still in complete chaos, and of course, being the Sith, there's always internal struggle and fighting for who's going to be in charge, and Darth Bane comes up and decides, you know what? I don't want the Sith Order to completely crumble and fall apart. The Jedi are horrible. It's proof we're better than that. So he decides he's going to get all the power and completely completely take charge. Good luck. I'm also continuing to read the Robin Hobbs series to get through all of them and I'm loving it because I have Fitz back. Now if you watched yesterday's video, you know my review of the first one of the Tawny Man trilogy. This is now going to be book two that I'm picking up for this month and that's called The Golden Fool. And I just cannot wait. Oh my gosh, that queen. She just hates anybody who's witted, which of course we know Fitz is. So anyway, I'm excited. It sounds like it's going to pick right up where the first one left off. And I can't wait to tell you more about it at the end of this month.
Now, there are two book clubs that I am excited to talk about and be a part of. The first one's Kim from Whimsical Narratives. And for her book club pick for August, she chose Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I've already read this. You'll have to go back and look at my review to hear what I thought. But needless to say, I still have this gorgeous edition and it sits on my shelf. So put two and two together. So I'm not going to reread it, though. I will be a part of her live video that she or live streaming that she does whenever we discuss it as a book club. But I'm probably not going to reread it until it comes closer to time for the second one to come out. But the other book club I am going to be reading for and excited about this month is my own the ABC book club. Please feel free to join us on Instagram. Basically, uh, they voted and it was almost unanimous. Only one person chose a different one. And that was The Luminaries by Susan Denard. And I have to emphasize that because all of us were struggling. Is it Illuminaries or is it The Luminaries? Well, it's The Luminaries. <laughs> that was hard for so many people. Me too. Anyway, this is going to follow Winnie, and I love that name ever since, you know, not to date myself or anything, but watching The Wonder Years. I have never heard a name like that since. Well, Winnie basically wants to join the secret order of the Luminaries. In order to do so, on her 16th birthday, she has to pass a series of trials. The only way she's going to be able to successfully do that is with the help of her ex-best friend and resident bad boy, Jay. So I am so excited to see what's going to happen here. I'm thinking probably enemies to lovers, but also some fun stuff. Can't wait to discuss this as a book club. I also enjoyed taking part in the Reddit Fantasy Bingo. And so to complete another square, this time I'm going to do Magical Realism. And for that, I chose Virtual Mode, book one of the Mode series by Pearson, Piers Anthony. <laughs> It's a much, much older book. Um, it's been around for quite a while. I'm excited about this, though, because it's got a horse on the cover. It's got a girl who um, named Colleen, who's a high school student, basically rescues the stranger. And then all of a sudden, when he comes to, he's talking about being part of an alternate reality, an alternate world, and he needs her help to reset things. And oh, my goodness, I just think it sounds kind of cool. My husband actually chose this, so we'll see. You never know if... I'll like the ones he says or not, but I'm excited because this does fit magical realism. I'm also trying to read a book that has to do with bookish items that I get in these book boxes, just so I'm staying current. And for this, I chose, of course, a brand new book that just came out from one of my all-time favorite authors, Jennifer Armentrout. This is book five in the Blood and Ash series, A Soul of Ash and Blood by Jennifer Armentrout. This is going to pick right up after The War of Two Queens, so I can't wait. I'm also challenging myself, of course, to make sure that I'm continuing series because like all of us, we get all these book ones coming out and we just love it. And then we never continue the series or wrap them up. Trying to be a little bit better about that by making sure every single month I'm at least on purpose one book to continue a series. So with that in mind, I chose one that I also try to get my book club to pick and they didn't. And that is Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. If you were with us, you know that Gideon the Ninth was fabulous. Again, a full review can be on the ABC Book Club Instagram if you want or on the reviews. But I cannot wait to continue with Harrow's adventure. I know that others were wanting to, but it just never got picked after several months of trying. And so I'm going to go ahead and continue it now. It is significantly thicker than the first one, too. So we'll see. A new thing this month, and yes, I will eventually figure out my groove and won't change this note card every single month, but instead of having readathon towards the end here, I decided sometimes I do readathon, sometimes I don't. So rather than just having it there and then talking about it at that time or skipping it, I'll talk about it in the beginning like I did with the magical readathon with Book Roast in the beginning of this video. And then for this spot instead is TBR Spinner. Well, that is basically uh, this. And basically, I spin it, 
and what it lands on, I have to fulfill that prompt. It's as simple as that, but I got this in the mail from um, the Lit Joy Crate, and I, it's just so pretty and so fun, and I thought, why not? So for this, because it landed on sequel, I chose Crush by Tracy Wolf. Most people have finished this series already, but I'm behind a little bit. This is book two of The Crave. I can't wait to pick back up and see what happens with Grace. She's still going to be at the Catmere Academy, I believe. So I'm excited. It's still fulfilling the academia stuff I tried to do really hard this whole time. And I can't wait to see what happens next. I, of course, also like to mention the top three books that are going to be coming out for this month that I am so excited to find and to be able to read myself or to put in that jar for next year. The first one is called The Blonde Identity by Allie Carter. This one is basically a rom-com and it follows a woman who has amnesia and then starts to under starts to discover along the way that she has an identical twin who happens to be a rogue spy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like I think this is going to be fantastic. It comes out on August the 8th. The second one I'm excited about is Foxglove by Adeline Grace. Now, this one is the sequel to Belladonna, which was so good, you guys. And from what I understand, this picks right up following Cigna and another. I can't say who, otherwise it gives away Belladonna. But if you know, you know. And this comes out August 23rd. The third one I'm super excited about is Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. This is the same person, who, or same author who wrote Rock, Paper, Scissors and several others. I'm sure you know her name well by now. Well, this story in particular follows 20 years after a baby has been stolen from a stroller. There's a murder at a nursing home. And this same nursing home, there's a woman named Edith who'd been tricked into going in there by her family. She's 80 years old and she's planning her escape because she knows that these two things are linked. Oh, I'm excited about that. And that comes out on August 29th. Also, of course, going to continue those Nesta Archeron stairs, and I'm going to continue doing the miles with the Lord of the Rings Frodo Baggins challenge. So wish me luck with that. I think that's all I've got for you guys for August. That's several books up there, not to mention several more that I couldn't put on the shelf because I don't have physical copies. I'll just be doing the audio versions through Hoopla, Libby, Scribd, Audible, all the things audio. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. Please like, subscribe, send your friends. I'm excited to have our drawing this month too for 275. Thank you guys so much for this journey. It's so fun. And I'll talk to you later. Take care.